until the killing of black men, black mother's sons, becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until this happens. We who believe in freedom, 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 freedom is a constant struggle. Many who participated in the civil rights movement of the 1960s took part alongside a woman named Ella Baker. Ella Baker's life is intertwined with the history of that movement. In the decades of the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, she worked with all of the well-known leaders, but mainly she worked with unknown people. During the 1940s, Ella Baker traveled for half of each year as field secretary and director of branches of the NAACP, the leading civil rights organization of the time. Ella Baker's task was to stimulate local campaigns and help build membership. Her schedule for a week in Georgia in 1942 reads, Thursday, Savannah, Friday, Macon, Sunday, Columbus, Monday, Savannah Mass Meeting, Tuesday, Brunswick Mass Meeting, Wednesday, Waycross Branch Meeting, Thursday, Augusta Mass Meeting, Friday, Athens. She resigned from the staff of the NAACP in 1946 because she felt the organization was too bureaucratic. But she remained active in the NAACP and later became education director and president of its New York branch. Ella Baker was my immediate predecessor, and um, I succeeded her in September of 1946. When she resigned, she was greatly loved by the rank and file, the people in the boondocks, especially in the South. She obviously had some real reasons for quitting, but she never expressed them publicly to the rank and file. My ego wasn't at stake at any point. And I had found a greater sense of importance by being a part of those who were growing. On the day that Rosa Parks refused to move to the back of the bus, the modern civil rights movement began. The Montgomery boycott of segregated buses brought thousands of people into the streets and created a new era of mass protest. The young minister, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., was elected president of the Montgomery Improvement Association. When the boycott ended in victory, King and other ministers formed a Southwide organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and I had decided that we would make out of the Montgomery Improvement Association a Southwide organization. And we chose Ella Baker to serve as the first director. There was a loose confederation of movements all across the South uh, for which Ella served as the liaison person coordinating it uh, with the Home Office in Atlanta. It was a Herculean task. This was before the day of women's liberation. And here was Ella, a veteran civil rights activist, uh, female, uh, with the task of coordinating the activities of a group made up predominantly of preachers. Uh, when I came some years later to be the executive for SCLC, I had the same difficulties. To have a woman to organize a church is difficult, but it is far more difficult, especially we're talking 20 years ago, it's far more difficult if that woman is not ministry, or in fact is not, not only not ministry, but does not show a real affirmation 
to religious, to, to the church. I was difficult. I wasn't an easy pushover because uh, I could talk back a lot. I not only could, but did. And uh, so that was frustrating to those who had never had certain kinds of experience. It's a strange world, a strange thing that men who were, who were supposed to be men around town, if they hadn't ever had a woman who knew how to say no and no in uncertain terms, uh, they didn't know what to do sometimes. And especially if you could talk, you know, if you talk loud, so, and had a voice like mine. See, you could hear me a mile sometimes if necessary. <laughs> I was in Atlanta when the sit-in started. When the kids began to sit in and sat and took it, none of us who were older, who had a streak of humanity, could fail to find some way of identifying with it. We knew it should take place. And my generation didn't have the nerve to do it, maybe. But they did. Move it along. Come on, boys. They again. acted as if they believed that this was their right. And they didn't, I mean, they weren't asking for any favors in the, in the sense of, won't you please? All right, it's our long now. Jailings of hundreds of the protesting students shocked the nation. Ella Baker wrote that the sit-ins meant more than the right to eat a hamburger. They were a signal to the nation that young people were determined to end discrimination. Ms. Baker, as the executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, was the main organizer of the Easter weekend conference in 1960 that led to the formation of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I mean, she sent out the appeal uh, to various student groups. I had always assumed that my role was to facilitate, which did not involve leadership. I didn't have the need for uh, being considered a leader. And th I think that got over to them in the original meeting because they knew that the meeting came into being because I did it. And so uh, they began to have that kind of confidence. And so they felt they could trust me to uh, maybe further the, the matter of their independence. Uh, and helped us uh, resist pressure from the NAACP, who wanted us to become NAACP youth chapters at the various colleges where there were sit-in groups, from CORE, who wanted us to become CORE chapters at the various places where all these student sit-in groups were located, and from SELC, who wanted us to become a youth wing of SCLC. They ministers from the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and some others. They felt sort of left out. They were f more concerned about how they could literally attach the young to them, you know. They were didn't want to lose them because this was something new. This was this was vitality, I suppose. She insisted that we had something special that was special to us. Uh, and she impressed upon us the necessity to keep this special thing separate. Ella Baker resigned from SCLC in 1960 to work with the protesting students. The most vivid memory of Ella Baker that I have is her sitting at these uh, SNCC meetings which ran uh, for days. You don't measure them in hours, they ran in days with a smoke mask over her nose, listening patiently to words and discussions she must have heard a thousand times. Most of us can't be patient with ourselves. I mean, for someone else to be patient with us was probably one of the most important things that she was able to bring to SNCC as a group. Miss Baker knew who she was, she knew her role, she knew and understood the work and our mission, and she knew what she was doing. And somehow, when, you know, this uh, cadre of folk got put together, being, uh, you know, almost all uh, male, that she saw herself being uh, not respected for the executive role that she could play for she the programmatic role that she could play. To be accepted at that time among a bunch of preachers who were never used to any women in their, their inner councils. Right. 
Uh, but and, but the, remember, she was she was a peer of theirs. Yes. That she right. she she was she was the bad time, and they were not ready, ready for that. She was, yeah. she, was, she was about raising hard questions That's right. outside of their normal right. ambit. Right. Right. And you know, we were we we ate it up. Friends, brothers, and sisters, in the struggle for human dignity and freedom, I am here to represent the struggle that has gone on for 300 or more years, a struggle to be recognized as citizens in a country in which we were born. I have had about 40 or 50 years of struggle, ever since a little boy on the streets of Norfolk called me a nigger. I struck him back, and then I had to learn I had to learn that hitting back with my fist one individual was not enough. It takes organization. It takes dedication. It takes the willingness to stand by and do what has to be done when it has to be done. Mm. 